What's up guys, Manny from Motor Million, it's cleanup time. Well, it's cleanup time, it's not gonna be with a rag and a polish, it's gonna be with wrenches and tools. And uh, if you guys watched our videos before, especially our Street Fighter series, because this is very similar, this is a super naked bike. We're gonna clean up the handlebar area and the biggest cleanup comes from removing the mirrors, but it's not just that, we're gonna do a little bit more, but also we're gonna add a little bit of functionality. So when we're done, this bike's gonna look much better and also functionality-wise, it's gonna be great. If you haven't watched my first ride video, go ahead and watch it. I think these mirrors are actually not bad for a stock mirror. They work great, but we're gonna run bar end mirrors, which I think suit the style of a super naked bike much more than just running mirrors like this or even the stealth mirrors by Rizoma. They look great on super bikes, but I think they look a little bit out of place on the naked bikes. Before I say too much, let me show you the parts real quickly, and then we'll do less talking and more working. At a quick glance, we got our Rizoma Reservoir, our little bracket that I'll show you in a second. We have our TWM levers. We have this little end cap piece. Well, again, I'll show you in a second. And I'm gonna change the grips because I really didn't think the grips do it justice. And furthermore, we're gonna to get to decide this together. We're gonna to be running one of these windscreens that you see in my hand. I have never used these things, let alone it's been a little while that we've tinkered around on a tono. So as I said, less talking, more working. Let's start the cleanup. Okay, so I got my first piece right here. This is our little clamp. This is made by DBK Special Parts in Italy. It will replace this clamp here that has a mirror hole. Unfortunately, on the Tuono, the perch for the clutch lever has this mirror mount in place. If you wanna remove it, you have to change the perch. You could run an RSV4 perch or a complete clutch lever that TWM makes. For the sake of this first phase of the cleanup video where we're gonna do the cost effective and also the easy approach, we're gonna leave it as it is. We're gonna try to see if we could block that piece off to clean it up. And uh, when we do our handlebars fully, we'll take care of that and we'll show you guys how to do it. But that's coming up on a later episode. Right now, let's focus at the task at hand. Let's clean up this, change our grips, and then you guys will get to see which mirrors we're gonna use. <music> Well, I'm learning as we go along. And first thing that we learned, this piece will need shorter bolts. So this is the stock bolt that we took off our little clamp that we have here. And this is the bolt that we used. And uh, as you see, it's shorter. Just like all of our other videos, guys, all the parts that we use on our videos is in the link in the description below. We try to get a new platform like this Tono and learn as we go along. And when you get this piece from us, if you use the correct link, so if it's meant for the Tuono V4, you'll definitely receive these shorter bolts from us as well. And uh, it already is looking good. Next, let's pull these bar ends off. Let's pull these grips off, replace the grips, and I'm gonna show you our bar end mirrors. So we're learning as we go along. I forgot about the up and down of the traction control and your APRC setting button that's over here. If you guys saw, there was a little lip that I actually cut off. I don't think that lip's needed. This is still pretty securely in place. We didn't compromise anything. So I tested the grips as it is, just to see how it looks like. It looks pretty good. I mean, it's not the best case scenario but it's not the worst either. It still looks clean. You see this bolt. If I really want to, I could probably change that bolt with a black bolt to kind of get that out of the sight. But uh, if you take a look at the stock grips, the stock grips are hollow inside here to go right over and cover everything. I'm gonna try this. This may not work, but I'm not gonna keep my stock grips anyways. I'm gonna first try to cut this to see if I, if I could cut it from like the, as close to the edge of the possible so that it actually has a grip on my handlebar so that we could just slide this or whatever that part is, not the whole thing, and cover up all this stuff over here. 
And then we'll try to see if it could cut this grip just from where this end is and then push it all in. And if it looks all good, we're good to go. If not, I would have just wasted one grip and one stock grip for your information's sake. So let's try this. I made two cuts and I think we realized that we're just gonna have to cut it this much. And if you guys saw what I used, you're probably wondering what tool this is. If you're a plumber, you exactly know what this is. This is actually a plumbing tool. This is a pipe cutter. And uh, I have this handy because it cuts the grip that resembles a grip very well. So uh, yeah, a pipe cutter for plumbing is being used on a toilet. Okay, so we are jumping from our grip onto the mirror and these are the Rizoma cottage mirrors. So now you know what mirror we're using. Let me show you this. This part worked out really well. The stock grip that we cut, it covers this up, cleans this up, it looks good. The only thing is that since this, we don't have as much space on the grip side, our grip is sticking out a little bit. So I wanted to see if I go any further, if I could put the bar end mirror here and still make it work before I cut this end off. I'm not opposed to cutting it, but if I could make it happen, then uh, that gives me the, the perfect room to have a complete grip on here. So let's take a look, see if it works. Okay, so this is great. The cut edge mirrors comes with all of these little adapters and expanding bits and bolts and spacers. And uh, I'm smiling because take a look at this. This is the spacer. And uh, this thing fits here perfectly to complete the end of this grip. And now we're using our expanding part. I know it's threaded in there, but you could use this. So we're gonna put our expanding part over here. Soon as we start tightening this, this is gonna pull this whole bolt inside. As it pulls it in, if you look, this is the cone. This expands this part of this contraption here. And then it's gonna hold it in place, which we already have uh, actually done too much. So let me get this out. Let's put this in. Okay, so. We're learning things with the Tuono as we go along and we solved our grip. The next was how do we make this as good looking as possible. This grip is sitting a little wider than the handlebar. Luckily, our bar ends that we have here fit perfectly inside of here. And then it finishes it off and also it's the same diameter as your bar end so that this will finish off the grip at the end. So this is perfect. There we go. And what else I like about it is that your bar end mirror, so be it the cut edge mirror or the ones that we've been using for the longest time, the CRG Aero mirrors will clamp right onto here so we don't have to use any of the adapters that either the cut edge mirror comes or the optional adapters of the CRG Aero mirrors. And uh, let me tighten this in place. And uh, we have a dilemma. These are the brand new cut edge mirrors by Rizoma. And this is our classic CRG Aero mirror. And uh, I wanna put this out on the YouTube channel so that you guys can decide. The cut edge mirror, the mirror and everything is, the design is beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, very sleek. And uh, let me put this on there so that you guys get an idea of uh, where this is going. And let's put this here. And, let's, and then let's tighten this. Perfect. So. It functions just like this. You could move the mirror around. This is, this is the cool thing about the cut edge mirror that you could put it at any location you want. And I'm showing you this because then you could just adjust it. And then let's say you want a lane split, you're in California, it's legal, or you want to do illegal things, don't tell us about it, but you do what you do. And uh, you'll put it up in a certain way, right? So that you can make it as, uh, you could try to make it as, as narrow as possible. You do your lane splitting or you want to get through inside a tight gap and then you'll put it back out. And when I stand back and take a look at it, I don't know, maybe humans don't like change that this looks too sleek for me. And also when I look from the front, I think this, uh, this piece here to me is a little too bulky. 
This is the, these, these seem to be the bulkiest pieces with these mirrors. This is sleek and nice, and this is bulky. And uh, let's show option number two. And I want you guys to tell me what you guys think, what your preference would be. And this is our classic, I call it classic, because these things have been around forever. This is our CRG Aero mirror. It has a bigger glass, so you see more. The part that I was talking about with the Rizoma mirror, take a look, so these only snap into place, so you can't put it wherever you want. You put it to wherever it snaps into place, and when it times to lane split, you can put this up as well like this, and lane split. And this comes here like this. Again, in terms of design, I think these parts are not as cleanly machined and as, as sleek as the Rizoma. When I look from this side of the bike, it seems that I see a lot less of the bracketry that's going on and more of the mirror, but again, maybe because the mirror is large. I really don't know which one to put on the bike. And just uh, if it was me right now, I think I'm gonna keep the CRG Aero mirrors on, but I really want you guys to let me know. What do you guys think? You guys like the CRG more or do you guys like the, the new cut edge mirrors more? So now that I'm set that I'm keeping the CRG Aero mirror and I think I'll do all the adjustments after, so we'll keep this here like this. We're done with our left-hand side grip. Let me jump on to the right-hand side and do the throttle side. We'll put the mirrors on, and then we're gonna do our levers. And finally, the final piece is gonna be putting uh, on our Rizoma Reservoir. Okay, grips and mirrors are on. It's looking much better already. And if you guys have been looking around, I'm sure you guys saw this box, the SC Project box. That's just a teaser for what's coming up next. We're not gonna do that today. But uh, speaking of next, let's do our TWM levers. And I wanna show you something about these. I opted in for short brake and standard clutch lever. And let me put them on. Once they're on, I'll talk to you what short means and what standard means and why I opted for short on the brake side and standard on the clutch side. Well, step by step, things are looking great. My smile is getting bigger and bigger. And I've mentioned to you guys that I used short on the brake side and standard on the clutch side. So, when you're choosing your TWM levers, make sure that if you brake with one finger or two finger, or even clutch with one finger or two finger, short is designed ergonomically to be the perfect position for it. I always brake with one finger, and when I'm in my riding position, this is perfect. And on the clutch side, we went for the standard because I actually use all four fingers on the clutch side, and it works perfect, but also don't forget, on the Tuono and on all of these modern bikes, this area is so big that if you run a shorter clutch lever, you're only going to be able to use just maybe one finger, maybe two, but in this case, this standard lever fits perfectly. Also, why did I really want to change my levers? Obviously, they look great, the ergonomics are great, but also the function. All the TWM levers have this clicker here that is the span adjuster, it adjusts your lever in terms of the span to your handlebar. So if you click, you could get it closer or further and you could adjust it as you want it. The stock has adjustment, but it's, I don't think an adjustment is big enough to get it to the place that I want it to. I don't think I mentioned on the first ride video, but when I was riding, I actually didn't like the brake lever at all. The brakes feel great, but just for the Ergonomics wise, I was never comfortable with just having one finger here. I always had to move my wrist and get my finger over the lever. So I think uh, this is great in terms of looks and functionality. And next is our Rizoma Reservoir. And also, we're gonna decide at the end of this video which windscreen we're gonna use. We have two WRS windscreens that I'm gonna show you. So now we're on to our reservoir. And uh, let me move this out. I already loosened it. And uh, this thing here is not very, very pretty. So we're gonna get rid of this, but we're gonna get rid of this as well so that we run our Rizoma Reservoir. But uh, I'm giving you an idea of why I'm cleaning this up because it's kind of hard to see on a ride video or even on some of the shots that we do. But when you're riding, you see this 
I think it's almost two inches, an inch and a half of a bracket that's bringing this whole reservoir up. And it doesn't have any purpose of clearance because I want left and right to make sure that this is not even getting close to the windscreen. But also, we have this beautiful Rizoma bracket kit that we're gonna mount up right here. And then, we'll be able to put our reservoir closer in and further down so it even looks cleaner and sleeker on the handlebars. Rizoma Reservoir is on, we went with gold because this is the Ultra Gold Tuono and we ran a Tygon tube right over here. I think it looks really cool. I'm sure the guys behind the camera will do the magic to show you pretty shots of this. The Tygon tubing is so short and it looks so clean. I love it and on top of it, I did want to install this bleeder valve just to make it easier on myself when I was bleeding the brakes. Everything is done and next is our WRS windscreen. Okay, this is not bolted on, but if it bolts on, it's gonna go in here and fit a little better because it's gonna take the shape of it, like this. For the sake of the video, let's leave it like this. I don't know, there's some plastic here. This looks, you know, the, the matte plastic piece. And it looks almost like the shape of the stock one, but it has a cutout here. And then let's remove this. See if this stays in place. Oh, it kind of does too. Perfect. I gotta look at it from different angles. I don't mind this, guys. This looks pretty nice. I walked around the bike. Don't forget, when you sit on the bike, you're not gonna be crouched down, so you're sitting up aesthetically. It may be even better when a rider is on the bike. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna keep this on because, as I mentioned, on the next video, we're gonna put an exhaust on, we're gonna take the bike out for a ride. That way, I can let you guys know if this actually gives any improvements for wind protection when I'm riding. And if it does, that's even a bigger plus to keep this. But we're gonna put both of the windscreens in the link below. I believe the little one is called the sport windscreen, and this is called the touring screen. And uh, they'll be in the links below, but let me put this together and then take a look at the bike again and make my honest decision on which one I would like to go with. Wow, does it ever look different from what we started off with this bike earlier in the video? And uh, I think I'm in love with this windscreen. I sat on the bike and I like to see it in my peripheral vision. And if you guys were following along in the beginning of the video, we said everything that we did here is in our peripheral vision. Yes, we do add a lot of function, but we also want to add a lot of looks to it. I think this looks just right when you're sitting there. So what did we do today? We added our CRG bar end mirrors, we did our grips, we did our TWM levers, and our Rizoma reservoir as well. And yes, we did show you guys the Rizoma cut edge mirrors. I just think that this ended up winning my heart over in terms of the look that we're going off for this motorcycle. And one thing that if you guys notice, we didn't change that we always do on our front and cleanup is the front turn signals. There's a really good reason for that. We did show you a teaser of what's coming up next with that SC Project box that we showed you on the next episode. We're gonna be putting a slip-on exhaust on this bike and flashing the bike. So what does the turn signal have to do with the flash? Well, on the Tuono and on the RSV4s, on the newer models, the turn signal can get integrated into your headlight and that's done by the flash. So we're gonna leave these turn signals on until next episode. And then once that exhaust is on, you can be sure that I'm gonna be just wanting to take this thing for a ride and then I can report back and tell you guys how much wind protection this thing gives to me. Or if it doesn't, I'm pretty sure it's gonna give quite a bit over the stock windscreen. And I think that's it for this episode, guys. If you guys liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Until next time, guys, have a good one.